Okay, let's talk about some of the other teams. So, since they're eliminated now, bro, we've got to have a conversation about SK. I can't believe they did it to me almost every single split. Every split, I feel like they're like mini Fnatic. Because you know, it's always Fnatic and SK in the BO1s always like overperform. And you're like, wow, is it for real this time? And then like, obviously, relative to their appropriate skill level, they both always flunk the playoffs, it feels, feels like. Like Fnatic never does usually challenge G2 like they should. And SK has done this so many times, bro, where you think, bro, they're the real third best team. And the playoffs comes. And in the playoffs, no. And the worst thing about the playoffs is, I've got to ask you, because it's your boy. I have to flame your boy now. Niski has had something that's gone on the last few years, Zabatin. He actually is clearly a good player. He's even a good teammate. Seems like he has a very great mind for how to play. But, bro, he just has this thing where it's like... He, it's like there's just random moments in playoff games where he just blacks out and loses his mind. Like he's like the he's like a bad version of the Incredible Hulk. Whatever happens to him, he just ints. Like you don't want to see me when I int. I don't know what the the line would be from the movie. He's a like, he's a fake fluke. Yeah, so, something you know? something because just happens. Not. I don't get it. it right? just, he just seems to out of nowhere just just blow it up and just lose the game out of nowhere. I don't get it. <laughs> I. It is, it is very hard. So I, I have never been on the SK train, these splits. Uh, everybody was like, SK is the best. Oh, I was like, right. wait a little bit, guys. What were you skeptical then, about? Oh, yeah. I was, the level of the opposition. Like, right. it's, it's important to me that the opponent is playing well. Like, right. if the opponent runs at Baron and leaves the Baron with 300 HP and dies, and you just, like, press smite, and then you run mid, <laughs> right. and you just win the game, you haven't done sure. anything in the game, sure. right? So I feel like... Uh, for instance, a team that didn't win trophies but where it was playing well was like uh, I mentioned it's BDS. BDS, you saw there was system vision. Yes. You clearly saw a chess, a chess game where the position won and the player executed the position to the yes. point where they won the game. SK felt like they came into the LEC. Which are the teams that are supposed to beat SK? G2, they play really bad the whole split. Fnatic, they had their bad runs, so they arrived middle of the slump and they played SK. Who else? Vitality. I don't want to. Don't get me started on Vitality. This is the the worst disappointment of all time. Yep. Uh, who else? Like BDS didn't play well the whole split. So SK found their peak of confidence in B1 in a in in a league where every single team that's supposed to beat them were in the middle of a slump. And if you look at the detail of the game, there was nothing that was done against SK aside from there were team fights at neutral objective and just. SK came close, but above the opponents, and they just came clutch. But never I felt like, oh, SK has this like play side that once they establish it, they win the game. There was a lot of like individual performances that were great. And since we know that Niski has this like kind of, yeah, you know, it's like planes when they have like these holes and they just like sh shut down. That's, that's really how I feel about Niski. And uh, I, I cannot explain that. I think we've seen it so many times over the year that yeah. I think he himself is probably looking at himself. He in must the be aware. Like, what is wrong with yeah, me? Exactly. What, what, exactly. Right. You have the what's wrong with me yes. uh, feeling when, when, when this happens. But once again, we have the disappointment of Niski with a team that plays around him, that he plays for the jungle that looks really good and the jungle support does things. And then it doesn't work. One thing I would say is these People, I would say Niski, I would say Elioya, MDK, they are a little too aggressive. I think that there is this myth in League of Legends that to win, you need to play aggro. And I think that if you ask me, right, who, which which league is the favorite of Niski and Elioya, I'm pretty sure they're like LPL over the Must LCK. Be. Be. Right? Because because there is this like, meet you at meet you at Herald 5v5, right? Doesn't matter if it's the right player. Just meet you and we're going to like sell that up. And he's really good in these fights in the first 15 minutes of the game. But then the game kind of slows down and becomes way more strategical and positional. And I think in that, in that regard, SK has never shown that it was a great team strategically. Like there was no pushing your pawns and trying to create a position. You saw it, especially in the Cannon game. I don't know if you saw yesterday, the Cannon flanks always felt off. They were felt oh, they were forced, especially the Baron one. Yep. They create a flank behind the Baron, and then he flanks and kills, but they give the Baron, and you're like, SK, guys, oh, hello, you were winning the game? Yes. So I feel like Niski... By the way, that if people, I'll, I'll even pedal. emphasize that, bro. That was crazy, that fight. Another one you're talking about. It's the one where all the Carmine Cop players are at the top of the Baron, aren't they? It's like, what's so mad is, it's like you just, 
you do that thing where it's like that, you know, that trade meme. It's like, I win the team fight, but I trade you the bar. It's like, you just, the trade doesn't make any sense, does it? I don't, you mean like, they had, they could have done both. They had, they could have stayed on the bar and won that, or they could have just taken the fight after. They did like the middle, the, the worst option of the two. <laughs> yeah, because at least during the regular season, they would get on Baron and flip it, but they were better yes. technically as a team. They were playing together. But here, it really felt like they wanted to play the BDS style of trying to create a flank. Yes. And then they were like, hey, coach, we created the flank. And it's like, but guys, the Baron is taken. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, sorry. Yes. And they were just running at a support. I remember they were like hounds yep. after Targamas. And yep. they're just like, oh, guys, the Baron is taken. It feels like there is not a single strategical layer in the way they approach the game. And that hurts them on the long run. And I think one thing that they have to correct, and especially Niski, is the, I would say, the hound mentality, which is I see a target. I know I have the damage to kill the target, but should you? Is it the best play to burn your flash right now to get 300 goals, knowing that later on you might not have this resource for something that has a, better, a higher stake? And yes. that's the trade of that, like Elioya. What's funny because they were both playing together, so Mad Lions sure. really like this, but Elioya and Niski have in common, which is a little bit too much the foot on the pedal in terms of like killing champions. Oh no, the great irony of all is that obviously, if people don't know, that wasn't just like social media beef. Elioya and Niski do not like each other and do not agree with each other on how to play a league. And that's why there's that story from Mike Harzi interview where apparently in the winter split last year, they just lost like every single scrim, though, even though they made the finals. Like they themselves don't even know how that happened. But the real irony, I agree, Zabatine, is I actually think that's like some Kobe Shaq shit where if they could both shut up, they clearly actually play together pretty well, in my opinion. Like they sort of are aligned. So I don't know why there's that beef because to me, when two players get together like that, just stay together, bro. Change the other players if you want. Change Chasey or fucking Illusag if you want, but bro, you two, you two had it. I thought you actually had a, a pretty good synergy, but for whatever reason, you have to be apart. Some reason, who the fuck knows why? Who knows? Why? I wish Bo played with Niski, man. I, I really That's the dream, obviously, like, in it. Yeah, right. It's like it's probably never, never gonna happen, but. Right, it's my it's on my Santa Claus list. I, I please just bring back both. No, I just state, look at this play. meta. In this meta, mate, it would be glorious. Think about this: you'd have born like him a Nidalee or something, and then Hillasan could be a total maniac, and then Niski at that point just have him on his whatever TF, whatever the fuck he wants, mate. Tell him pick whatever you want, bro. Because yeah, these guys would just like they wouldn't even have to talk, mate. They would just all go in together. I feel like it's the ultimate team of just like we don't even need to come. He speaks Chinese, don't matter. Just go in, just go in when he I'll goes buy in. <laughs> I'll buy the jersey. No matter yes, who you play yes. for, if these three guys play together, I'll buy the jersey. Yes. Because, you know, it's like uh, Bra Brazil 1970. It's like win or loss. It's, it's a, uh, I'm not going to pronounce it because my accent's terrible, but it's like, you know, beautiful game. It's it's the Barcelona 2008. It's like whether you lose or you, yes. or you win, the, the people, you win the people's hearts because playing yes. aggressive on the edge, on the jungle is really good. But I don't think that Niski needs someone to play towards, and I don't think he had anyone because Isma is not this player. And I'm, I think Nisa, Isma deserves his position in the LEC by, by far, but I'd love to see it at least once. Niski, Ilisang, and Bo for the craziest possible. And you can ask Karzi and some type guy like Hirit or Photon, and I will be the happiest man because at least this team will lose at seven or win at seven, but we'll have the craziest games. Also, by the way, props to Zabatine for what a base draw. Because when he even said Barcelona, all you noobs were like, I was going to say the one with Neymar and Suarez. No, he picked the base OG one with like Thierry Henry and Eto. And that was actually a fucking one. banger team. If you ever go back, look up that roster, boys and girls. And if you don't know that lineup, get in the history books because that is a lineup you need to know. That, that team was a banger. That was a fucking mega team, mate. I agree. I loved it. My favorite of all time. Uh, the we, the team that won every single trophy yes. in a year. Every yeah, single everything. one. Right, that was crazy. what about um, to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.